I'm cringing so hard at myself right now. <laughs> Ooh, I'm not saying to do this. So you wanna know how to never plateau? Well, I've got the secret for you. I hate myself, I swear to God. Muy a la vi, solita, pues me pregunté ¿Qué pasa cuando me bailó? Cerquita, eso fue descomunal Dale, dale, tra, tra, tú sabes cómo es Cómo se lo mami in case you didn't know, yellow is my favorite color, so obviously I have this chair in my office. How cute! <laughs> I'm gonna do a photo shoot just like this. Period. Anyways, hello and hello, welcome back to Time with Tally, or welcome to Time with Tally if you've never been on my channel before. My name is Tally, and I do beauty, fitness, health, lifestyle type of content, or really whatever I feel like doing. <laughs> but most of the time I act the fool. So for today's video, I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about my secret to never plateauing. Now I'm not saying to do this, but this is what works for me. So we're going to get right into it because I don't want to make this video longer than it has to be. And if you like what you hear today, please be sure to follow, like, comment, share, and subscribe. You already know what to do. Anyways, my secret to never plateauing is this. Every three to four months or so, I take off a week from the gym. Boom. That's it. Mic drop. I'm out. But in all seriousness, I actually do. I take off anywhere between five to seven days, just depending on how I'm feeling or how busy my month or week is. So for someone like me, I do usually go to the gym anywhere between four to five days a week up to about 10 to 12 times a week. But that is because my schedule can be a little bit flexible. So some weeks I actually allow myself three to four days off, whatever it may be. And on my days off, I usually will go to the gym twice, once in the morning and once at night. So for someone like me with a really busy schedule and going to the gym so much, taking the time off, it does not hurt. A week off, a week off? Did she just say a week off? Yes. Yes, I did, <laughs> but I'll tell you why. During that week off, I allow my stress levels to go down. I allow myself to also maybe do things during that week that I wasn't able to the week before, whether it be errands or chores or catching up on homework like when I was in school. This time also allows for my muscles to fully recover. I do try my best to make sure that my workout plan um, and schedule lines up in a way that allows for at least two days of recovery between hitting each muscle group. But sometimes some weeks compound movements don't really fully allow for that recovery before I'm hitting that muscle again. So this one week really does allow me to fully allow that recovery process to do what it has to do. Not only that, a lot of the times I know myself well enough to know that around the three to four month mark is when I tend to start feeling unmotivated or like there's not much change. Although I'm still continuously progressively overloading, I'm starting to feel some type of a burnout or I'm bored with my regime or whatever it is. Regime? I don't know. So this week off is kind of like a reset really for me. When I actually do go back into the gym after day five or seven, I feel more motivated this week off usually will spark that for me. And sometimes you just need to keep things interesting, especially when you've been doing this for so long. A lot of gym goers tend to believe that a week off will cause some type of like massive regression. But that's because a lot of us just suffer from body dysmorphia. I did read an article one time that said something along the lines, I think it was the Journal of Physiology. I'll, I'll link it in the description. It spoke of how change doesn't really occur until about week two. And that's where people started to see differences in their cardiovascular state, endurance, and their lean muscle mass. But again, read the article, I don't want to quote anything. <laughs> People tend to forget that you burn calories by literally existing. You burn calories by sleeping and breathing and eating and talking and walking and doing all the things that you do. So during the week off, I usually will eat lesser calories and still remain eating healthy. But truthfully, that has changed everything for me. Taking off that time when I finally go back, it's like you're keeping your body shocked. You're keeping your body surprised. And like I always say, you want to keep your body on its toes so it can continuously adapt. It's basically the same mechanism of progressive overload in a sense. You're giving it something new to react to or respond to. I always feel after that one week off, I usually will feel muscle soreness again, even though that's not an indicator of mu actual muscle growth or not the sole indicator. I like to feel the soreness. I don't know. I'm crazy. I'm a masochist a little bit. My body is really just sitting there like, oh, what's this? What's going on? What do I got to do next? And all of that really just ties into the whole feeling of being like, oh, I'm here. I'm present again and I'm ready to go harder than I was before. And that's usually where I see the most change is when my mood is really in it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still go when I really don't feel like going. But we all know that the days that we're in the mood to work out, those workouts kind of hit different. That's where we go beast mode. Anyway, I will link in the description a couple of the articles that I read that actually recommend that you take a week off every now and then. Maybe it'll be something that benefits you and fits into your lifestyle. If you feel crazy enough to try this out, let me know and let me know how you felt after. Leave comments below. In conclusion, thank you all for spending time with me today. And I'm sorry I couldn't talk too much, but I'm sure you guys love that. Anyways, <laughs> I will see y'all in the next video. Bye. Puso un casting para los que valoran Si no es seguro pues no se enamora